welcome to the League of Women Voters of Portland's Voter Forum for the Candidates for Portland Auditor. I'm Debbie Kay, League President. The League is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to making democracy work. We believe democracy works best when voters are informed about issues and engaged in their communities. We're presenting this forum to give Portland voters the opportunity to learn more about these two candidates, Simone Reddy and Brian Setzler. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're not yet able to return to our traditional in-person voter forums. We expect to do so for next fall's general election. All participants, therefore, are in different locations. Please share this voter forum with your friends. We all need to be informed voters. The League is grateful for support from the Carolyn Velma Sailing Foundation, the Weiss Foundation, the League of Women Voters of Portland Education Fund, and our media partner, Metro East Community Media. Our moderator for this forum is Linda Mather. Linda, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Debbie. I'm pleased to be the moderator for this voter forum. Under the voter forum rules agreed to by the candidates, each of the candidates will give a two minute opening and a two minute closing. In between will be questions and the answers will be approximately 90 seconds. The candidates have agreed to these restrictions or guidelines, if you will, as determined by the Secretary of State's random alphabetizing for the election, Ms. Reddy will go first with the first opening statement, will then alternate questions and then go to the closing. So uh, candidates, we're ready to get going. And Ms. Reddy, would you please give us your two minute opening statement? Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Simone Reddy and I'm an Oregonian. I was born in Salem and raised in Portland and I grew up and I currently reside in Northeast. I've been schooled by our region's public institutions as a student, a parent, and a public servant. I'm running for city auditor because Portlanders have questions and they want answers about how their government is working. I've spent my entire career asking and answering questions of public interest. And it's no secret that Portlanders are not happy with current conditions when it comes to homelessness, public safety, and equity. The auditor's office is uniquely positioned to make city government more accountable and accessible to the public. My experience, values, and breadth of community support show that I am ready to lead this office. I'm the right person for this job because I have served its residents throughout my life as an artist, advocate, and auditor. I bring 15 years of public service to the, excuse me, to the position. Portland has a long tradition of performance auditing, which looks beyond how government resources are accounted for and into how efficiently and effectively they are used. I'm prepared to uphold that tradition. I have nearly a decade of progressively responsible performance auditing experience. During that time, I've applied my outreach and analysis skills to performance audits of Oregon's most valued systems and investments, including childcare, TriMet, the Oregon Zoo, and the Regional Affordable Housing Bond. Before I became an auditor, I worked with youth and families in the Portland area to help them prepare for life after high school. I want to thank you again for having me today, and I look forward to answering your questions. And thank you. And Mr. Seltzer, your opening, please. Thank you. And thank you for hosting this and having both Simone and I here today. I appreciate it. I got into this race because I'm an independent certified public accountant, and I want to make sure that our government is working better. I think most of us know that Portland's on the wrong track, and I'm stepping up to help get us back on track and to bring an independent outside perspective to City Hall. My professional background, I've been in, well, first of all, I've been a Portlander for 35 years and I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. I grew up in Seattle, actually. I've been a certified public accountant for 30 to 35 years. I'm a small business owner. I've done, I've owned a couple different companies and led a number of organizations. I, I'm involved in a number of nonprofits over the years, including uh, KBU Community Radio, where I'm currently on the executive committee, and I'm a co and I'm one of the founding board members of Livelihood Northwest, 
Livelihood Northwest is an economic development organization that serves about 400 businesses and entrepreneurs annually, 78% of whom are people of color and 70% led by women. I was one of the first CPAs, if not the first CPA in the country to earn an MBA in sustainable business. And I wanna bring a holistic view to this office to help get Portland back on track. I have 30 years, of 30 to 35 years. I also have audit experience. I've been an auditor with the Washington State Department of Revenue, an internal auditor for Red Lion Hotels. And I have two past jobs working as a financial auditor for big eight international accounting firms. I have the experience, the values and the uh, training to be Portland's next auditor. Hey, and thank you. And stay with us because you get the first question. So, Mr. Setzler, if you would, a candidate for the Portland Auditor must hold at least one of three certifications public accountant, internal audit, certified management accountant. Which of these do you hold, and why is that significant? That's a great question. Thanks for asking that. I'm a certified public accountant, I've been a public accountant for 30 to 35 years. I think it's important to understand of those three designations. CPA is the only designation that has public in its title. And that is because we have a duty as a profession to, uh, to the public. I think it's the top credential in this field. I had a significant amount of audit training, both in, at the college level. I had to pass a comprehensive four hour auditing section in, in an exam at one point. I had two years of audit experience to get my license, and I continue to do 40 hours of continuing education each year. It is, uh, I believe, the top credential in this field, auditing and, and performance auditing, which is one of the things that the city uh, CPAs have been doing since the 1960s. And I look forward to bringing an outside independent perspective to this office to help get us back on track. Thank you. Ms. Reddy, your certifications? Sure, I hold the Certified Internal Audit or CIA designation. That's the only globally recognized internal audit certification and it's the top credential for those in the performance auditing profession. There are three components to the CIA. The first is auditing standards. The second is auditing practices. And the third is business knowledge for auditing. I'm also a certified government auditing professional, professional or a CGAP, and that demonstrates my knowledge of audit standards and governance in the public sector, as well as management of the audit function and the unique aspects of auditing in the government environment, like equity of services. My qualifications and experience make me a good fit to be Portland's auditor because I have the skills to assess government performance and also to make people feel seen and heard, which is really critical to issuing recommendations and getting them implemented. As a certified government auditor, I uphold ethical principles of integrity, objectivity, confidentiality, and competency, as well as responsibility, honesty, and the public interest. Thank you. Let's continue with certification for a moment. Um, besides the three that we've mentioned here, should any other certifications be required for candidates for the city auditor? And Ms. Reddy, you can just keep going. Sure, I think um, the requirements for running for this office should probably evolve as the profession changes. Um, the IIA, which is the Institute of Internal Auditors has a variety of different designations that one can earn. Um, in the field of auditing. And I think uh, as those requirements change, it would make sense um, you know, to keep this office held by a professional, make sure that it follows those standards. Um, and of course, uh, make sure that there is a way for the office to ensure that government performance auditing standards are upheld. Um, I follow in my, in my professional auditing practice, the yellow book, which is issued by the, the US GAO. And so it's really important that um, that be part of any curriculum that is required to run for this office. Thank you. And Mr. Setzler, your response? 
So can you repeat the question one more time? Sure. Uh, should certifications, in addition to the three that are required, be required of candidates for city auditor? I think I don't think they need to be required. I believe that the, I'm glad to see that these are required and that there's a base for this office. I think it's important that the that the auditor have professional credentials. I don't know that there's any other additional ones that are required. I think other ones would be helpful. Like, for instance, I have an MBA in sustainable business and have other licensing along the way in my professional career that I think are relevant, but I don't think they need to be required. Hey, thank you. Let's turn a little bit in our questioning. A core function of the auditor's office is performance audits. What would be your selection criteria in deciding which bureau programs would benefit from a performance audit? Mr. Sessler, you start us off. So one of the things that I want to do when I get into to the office is to bring a transparent approach to how we select audits. Using something like a decision matrix, it's a tool to help identify what are the criteria we're using to, to do the audits, and then how are we weighting those criteria so that it's more transparent to the public what we're doing and how we're making decisions. As I've been involved in the process, I've heard from many people, both labor business interest and people in the public wondering how are these decisions being made about what we're auditing? So that's one of the ways I look to make that transparent. And really until I get to the office and understand what is in the pipeline, what is the input from staff and additional people, I don't know exactly what, what I'll be auditing first, but I plan to make that, uh, those criteria public so that people understand what we're auditing and why. Thank you, and Ms. Reddy? Yes, the, the, the Portland Auditor's Office has built a really strong reputation on the quality of its performance audits. Um, in recent years, the office has earned national recognition for its audits of uh, various topics of public interest, including police overtime, um, enhanced service districts, and the city's economic development agency. Um, all of those one high marks for being timely and responsive to community needs, and also for their potential to create cost savings as well as more equitable outcomes for Portlanders. My criteria for selecting programs to audit would be based on an assessment of risks to public health and safety, as well as financial and, and legal risks, as well as operating risks. And that assessment would include uh, looking at issues concerning city residents and employees, um, as well as the potential to increase equity of services. Uh, that would mean looking at which programs and practices at the city are either contributing or reducing uh, disparate outcomes for people. Um, if I'm elected auditor, I would look forward to interacting with or innovating the way that Portland interacts um, with residents, uh, specifically the auditor's office. And that would mean using social media and other technologies to better uh, understand what the community's priorities are so that they can be reflected in our work. Hey, thank you. you stay with us for this question if you would. Please discuss the recommendation from a recent audit review that would be particularly important for your follow-up as the new auditor. Or the recommendations from a recent audit that I think would be especially important to follow up on um, would be those from an audit that was released um, earlier in April about the police's use of surveillance technology. That audit found that the police needed more direction when it came to the information it was collecting specifically during public demonstrations. And the audit recommendations were designed to improve trust with Portlanders um, in terms of making sure that the information it was, was gathered responsibly and having guidance in place, um, as well as publishing reports on how that information was being used. Um, I think those recommendations are especially important to follow up on because the police have plans to expand their use of technology, uh, specifically through body-worn cameras 
So it's really important that the public has assurance that its rights and its, its privacy are being protected and used appropriately. Okay, thank you, Mr. Seltzer. I was going to mention the same audit as Simone, but I won't piggyback on her. I'll, I'll pick something else. And just a general comment that of many of the audits I've read and looked at, one of the things that's kind of been interesting to me as an outsider, and one of the reasons I want to come in here with an outside perspective is, what is the follow-up that's been happening from the auditor's office? I've seen audits that were done in 2004, there was certain findings, 2011, the same findings, and then more recently, yet the same findings again. And I'm wondering why these, why these uh, same problems are coming up and not being improved and resolved. So I plan, one of the things I'd like to do on really all of our audits is to improve the feedback and follow-up in this function. I'm just not sure, as an outsider, I don't know what level of follow-ups being done, but we are not spending our money wisely if we're coming up with findings and not following up to see that changes are being made. Okay, and tell us now, if you would, uh, how should the Portland auditor's performance most efficaciously be reviewed? Well, I think the, I mean, just in the basic thing is, first of all, the way I would evaluate it is in a comprehensive fashion, how is the city doing? And the auditor is part of the city. The auditor has a certain role within that structure but I think the auditor as a leader and an elected leader has a role to help get this city back on track and that business as usual isn't working. So I think one way to evaluate the overall auditor performance is how's the city doing? Okay. And Ms. Red. Yeah, I think there are a number of ways that um, the public could evaluate the performance of the city auditor's office. Um, one obvious would obvious one would be efficiency. So how many audits are being produced? And it's important to remember that the auditor's office um, produces a, a wide variety of reports, not just audits, but follow-up reports, as well as investigations um, through its hotline. Um, and as well as the Ombudsman office, which also issues reports. Uh, another, another good way to measure the performance would be looking at effectiveness. And a primary way that auditors uh, measure that is through the percentage of, of recommendations that are being implemented. Um, that's something that shows the impact that our work has um, in terms of improving government services and programs. I think another area that would be um, important to consider is, is quality or customer service. And that would be um, gathering feedback from both the community and employees and management from the city uh, to get their perspectives on, on how they think they've been treated through the audit process. Thank you. And if you would continue with this question, what methods would you consider using to increase the likelihood that an audit's recommendations are followed? Yeah, so I think this goes back to our discussion of, um, of audit follow-up. Um, I think one way to keep pressure on uh, audited bureaus and programs is to, is to use the follow-up process that would involve monitoring the recommendation rate of implementation uh, that's something that the city auditor is doing now with a, an interactive dashboard. You can see the, which audit recommendations are outstanding based on different areas of city programs. I think another way to keep that pressure would be to make sure that, um, you know, as Brian was saying, risks that keep coming up year after year, that we're keeping track of those and that we're integrating them into our annual risk assessment um, to see if maybe we need to approach something from a slightly different angle or topic. Um, those are two ways that I think would be a great way to, to keep the pressure on in terms of implementing rec recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Setzler. 
Yeah, so the methods to increase the implementation of the ideas, uh, as Simone mentioned a little bit, and the use of dashboards and to give more real-time information rather than static reports. Reports are written, make a bunch of publicity the day they come out, and then immediately start getting stale and are, are comprised of old information. The dashboard is something that's in, kept in real time, giving real time information and is constantly updated so that you can see both how we're doing in terms of not just how we are doing, but how the city is performing. Are we doing better? Is the, is the dashboard going in the right way? Or is it falling off and there's changes we need to make? I also think the auditor has a chance to be more public with what they're finding. I'm sure, again, I'm not down there. I don't know all the communications channels and resources they have, but I find that the, um, you know, a lot of people have never heard of the auditor's race or been engaged with it. So obviously they're not doing a good enough job communicating to the citizens of what's going on uh, in that office and to, to do a better job to make the public aware. And that goes to, engaging uh, better with our democracy in general. You may find this question a continuation, so hold on, which is what changes in the auditor's office would you consider making if elected? I really don't have any immediate changes. Not being in the auditor's office, coming in as an outside independent person, the first thing I think I need to do is get down there and assess what's actually going on. I'm quite certain that there are changes that can be made that will make the, the office more effective, more efficient, but I don't really have a long list right now, except to come in and to do, to, to, to help be the eyes of the, of the community and of the citizens and to um, see what's going on down there and to make the office better. The, coming in as an independent CPA and to help get Portland back on track. Thank you, Ms. Reddy. Thanks. Um, if I'm elected auditor, I will prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion across city programs and within the auditor's office. A lot of local governments put goals in place to make our region more equitable and just, but uh, infrequently, uh, they make the necessary investments to make sure that those goals are achieved. And that includes monitoring whether progress is being made. Um, as an auditor in the Metro Auditor's Office, I've built a strong track record of auditing programs to improve equity, both within our region's workforce um, and our communities. And that means identifying gaps in the program's abilities to measure their success and create clearly defined roles and responsibilities for advancing equity. I intend to bring my experience conducting audits um, at the state and regional uh, government level, as well as my lived experience to help ensure that the city does a good job of serving all of its residents. Thank you. Uh, you are listening to the League of Women Voters of Portland voter forum or podcast for the candidates for city auditor. We're now ready to turn to another question. That's a little bit different. So um, Ms. Reddy, you're gonna start us off with, what is your opponent's best quality? I think uh, my opponent uh, has come across as very friendly uh, throughout this campaign. I think that's a good quality um, in, a, in a public servant and an auditor because it helps uh, to put people at ease. Um, often the work of the auditor is, uh, it can be critical and it can be contentious and it's important to preserve relationships as much as possible throughout the process so that ultimately uh, audit recommendations are being implemented and services can be improved. And Mr. Setzler? Well, it's been fun. This is the first time this race has been contested since Ronald Reagan was, was president. So it's, it's interesting having two people seeking this election. And it's been an enjoyable process learning from Simone. There's things I learned from her. She's obviously been doing this work for 10 years and brings great ideas to the table. She too is friendly and I appreciate 
the fact that she does bring equity up. I like in the last answer, she brought it up. And it's one of those things that I just have as a standard and, and believe that equity, economics and the environment should be a part of every audit that we do and kind of have that assumption. But I've enjoyed running against Simone and participating in these forums with her. And, and she's been a great, incredible candidate. And I think Portland will be served by either of us being elected. Thank you. And another slightly different question, Mr. Setzler again, uh, who are your role models and why? I have a number of role models and I got asked this question on a, in another forum and above my desk, I have a picture of um, right here, Winnie Mandela and Rosa Parks. And it's the picture is called Color Me Freedom. And I'm not sure if it was taken in Africa or the United States. But it's these two women together and they're, they're heroes of mine because I just know the challenges they've overcome and had to deal with and the uphill battle. And yet they always it's operated with dignity, fortitude, commitment. And whenever I've, I've been an activist along for my life and trying to make the city and my community better is what I'm about. And sometimes that can get lonely. Sometimes it can be frustrating. And whenever I feel a little bit down, I just have to look at these women and understand that my challenges are, are nothing. And they give me inspiration in that way. Thank you. Ms. Reddy? Sure, I appreciate this question. Um, I have a few that come to mind. Uh, the first would be my parents. Um, they met in... Uh, college when they were both newspaper reporters for their college uh, newspaper in San Jose. Um, they come from different racial backgrounds. And to me, uh, they've instilled the importance of asking questions and being curious. And also the idea that, um, you know, they're living proof that we can overcome our differences, which is a, a value that I think is really important in the profession of auditing. Um, to be able to see things from both sides and be constructive in feedback. The other person that comes to mind is Nicole Maher, who was the executive director at the Native American Youth Association. Uh, she was very young when she took on that role and the energy and uh, professionalism that she brought to her leadership um, was really inspiring to me. Okay, thank you. Back to more content, if you will, and this ready. What are the limitations of a traditional role of a government auditor that the public might not know? Great question. Um, so one of the keystones of government auditing is independence. Um, my opponent and I have both talked about the importance of that uh, standard being upheld. And it is really critical to ensuring that the public can trust in our work as well as uh, folks who are being audited. Uh, that means making sure that we have a healthy distance from the programs that we're auditing. And that goes for uh, the elected official as well as the entire audit organization. So in this case, the city auditor's office. Um, it's really important that we have safeguards in place um, so that we are not doing the work of management. Um, certainly we wouldn't want to uh, do the work of management and then evaluate it because our, our perspectives wouldn't be objective. Um, so it's really important that there be a clear disclosure if there are potential conflicts of interest and also um, mechanisms in place to manage those so that our independence isn't threatened at any point uh, throughout the audit process. Thank you, Mr. Setzler. You know, I'm not, again, not working in the office. I don't know what limitations there are other than as Simone said about being independent. I believe that I was looking at the legislation the other day, the regulations in the Portland City Auditor's Office, and it seems like the auditor has wide latitude to direct their work, figure out what's going to be done. And that's what I would expect. We want an, in, we want an auditor who's down there doing the people's business and is allowed to go where they think they need to go. Okay. And um, 
make you feel better. Your final question, Mr. Seth, let's start us off. In your opinion, is there a role for a citizen's advisory commission to periodically review the auditor's performance? Why or why not? That's a question I hadn't really considered. I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, I just don't think it's a bad thing. I wonder about the ability to get the information to um, do that evaluation and, and to have the training to be able to evaluate it. Be a little bit like, you know, if there's a doctor, how do you, how do, who comes in and evaluates how the doctor did it? There's a professional skills and decision making that happened from through this work. And I just don't know how well uh, a lay person committee would do, but I certainly wouldn't be opposed to it. Could be a good innovation. Ms. Reddy? Yeah, I appreciate this question because it, it raises a uh, one that sometimes get asked, which is who audits the auditor? <laughs> um, in in government auditing standards, um, it's required for, for those offices that comply to be reviewed by a team of outside auditors from another jurisdiction um, to ensure that the processes that they're following are actually leading to compliance with those yellow book standards. Um, I think having a community advisory committee could be really helpful in terms of getting that input that I talked about um, to make sure that we are actually auditing the things that uh, community cares about. Um, I don't know exactly how it would look, but I, I too am excited and compelled by that idea. I think any way that we can gather more feedback from the public and incorporate it into our, our audit work, whether that's on an individual audit base basis or an entire annual audit schedule, I think that's an improvement. Okay, and thank you both. We turn now to your closing statements. Again, that will be two minutes. And Ms. Reddy, you'll start us off, please. Well, I wanna thank you again um, for the opportunity to speak with you today. I really appreciate uh, the leadership and the preparation that you've put into this discussion so that voters can make an informed choice on May 17th about who will lead the auditor's office. I'm the only person in this race with the right experience, values, and support to hold city government accountable on day one. I wanna leave you with three reasons why I'm ready to be Portland's next city auditor. One, I have a proven understanding of government auditing standards, including independence, and I'm, upholded, I'm committed to upholding that standard so that the office's work remains credible. Two, I'm dedicated to ensuring that government resources, including audit resources, serve those who need them most. And three, I know that government works best when diverse voices are heard. That means communicating results in ways that encourage the public to be involved and considering their input in setting our audit priorities. I would be honored to have your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Setzler. Yes, thank you for hosting this. Every time I get a chance to meet with Simone in these forums and, and have the conversations, I think we really get to educate the public better. And also I learn more and, and develop my learning of what's going on here. Performance auditing and auditing is an advanced management tool. I really look forward to coming to this office as an independent certified public accountant, an outside perspective with a background in business, nonprofits, and government to bring that outside perspective to see how we can help get Portland back on track and do a better job. The basic questions, where are we now? Where are we going? How effective are we? How can we be more effective? Those are the questions that need to be asked and answered. We need to accommodate diverse communities and get their input. And we need to look at a variety of services that are going on throughout the government and to see where we, what need, first of all, what needs to be audited? And then are we getting the bang for our buck and actually improving government performance? I am in this race to win it, and I look forward to your vote and support, I hope, for the people listening. And again, I want to thank Simone for being here and being a great uh, opponent in this race. And 
I'll leave it there. And I'll add my thank you to both of you. And in fact, for running, never mind participating in the forum. So thank you. And to you, Debbie, now. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. And thank you to the candidates. This has been a really interesting and informative forum. Audience members, please, again, share this information with your family and friends. Informed voters are powerful voters. If you were registered to vote by April 26th, you should receive your ballot by the first week of May. As with all Oregon elections, it is mail-in only. Go Oregon. <laughs> Ballots must be postmarked by Tuesday, May 17th at 8 p.m. You can also find a drop-off location near you by checking www.vote411.org. This is Debbie Kay for the League of Women Voters of Portland. Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Be an informed voter and remember, your vote counts.